Yeah. You know, good evening, everyone. It is 531. This is Robert Stevenson. I want to call to order the uh, Sussex County Granville Regional School District School Committee meeting for this evening. Can I get a, a motion at the meeting? So moved. Second. All right. Now, we, since we have Desiree on the phone tonight, we're going to do all our votes by roll call. Um, can I get a, we're going to get a vote to enter into the meeting. Uh, Pam? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Erica? Yes. Russ? Yes. Desiree? Yes. And Rob's a yes. Motion passes 6 0, zero. Okay, can I get everybody to stand, please, for the winner leave? Desiree, you too. <laughs> <laughs> I play the lead. To the flag of the, the United, United States, States of America, America. And, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Great, right. thank you, everybody, for that. We have another consent agenda tonight. So this is your speak now or forever hold your peace. If there's anything in there that you want to pull out, please let us know. We can take care of that. If anybody has anything, if not, great, we'll move through. We've got warrants here uh, that we certainly have enough signatures on so we can get those done. That's great. Uh, Superintendent Willard, do we have any correspondence this evening? We do not. All right. Public comment. We have nobody here but our two principals. So. Public comment is not going to happen. Look at that. We get to go faster to the uh, best part of the meeting. Lucas, what do you got for us? Well, before I start, let me know, or let me warn you, yeah. about half an hour ago, I accidentally ate a fly. So if I start coughing during okay. this, that is why. So you're, oh, you know. you're going to be okay. It's like the little old lady. It's all right. <laughs> but, um, Perhaps she'll die. Just the general things that are going on at the school. Senior pictures, last chances tomorrow. Right. Um, student council informed me a couple things they have planned. There, they plan a pep rally for November as well as a food drive of sorts. And also they plan to do a cocoa social by the end of the quarter. The first painting of parking spots was last Saturday. I did not get an exact number because I could not find this downy, but it was about like 10 people by the end of it. It seems a little low, but I there is other days, right? Day. There's one other day. One other day. So. I thought it was a rainy day. So, yeah, that was a rainy day. day. Oh, okay. So here's hoping more people come on that second day. Do yeah. you know when that second day is? I don't know. The near future. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. You're going to do fine as the narrator. <laughs> You're do fine. Thank you. Um, the high school band will be marching in the Farm Day Parade. I'm blanking on the date. The Hold 20th. On. I think it's the 28th. 28. 28. It is, it's the 28th. I, sh I should know this. I'm the president of the band. So you think <laughs> I know that, but apparently not. It's okay. And it's a village, Lucas. We're all good. We'll hear it back. Yeah. <laughs> and as I mentioned earlier, the fall play, we just had our first meeting today, just to read through. So things are heating up, as they say, and we'll be ready. And this is what? What's the title of this again? Puffs. Right. And this is the Hufflepuff thing, right? Yeah. Very good. It's exciting. Great. Fun stuff. All right. And also, message from Magnolia. Hi, all. I sincerely apologize for missing this meeting. It is not as long as the last one. But we don't <laughs> so much as Hi, all. I sincerely apologize for missing this meeting. I was told I could attend then. Was told I couldn't at the last minute. All is well up at the high school. Field hockey is looking forward to a great game against Northampton tonight. Boys and girls. I think that says cross country. XC. Is that cross country? Yeah, that's cross country. Cross country. And golf. Who's been having a good season so far. As well as as well against Palmer, girls and boys soccer have some exciting upcoming games. Girls varsity volleyball is doing well and has games on Friday and Thursday. Very good. Thank so you. Ed, Magnolia is not an AI, right? Like this she, is she's real. real. Yeah. I don't know. AI is going everywhere nowadays. That right? is true. <laughs> All right. She promised she'll be here October seventeenth. Is that the day of the mm -hmm. next meeting? She yes. promised she'll be here okay. next time. She does not right. have any games for sounds, for now. Sounds great. <laughs> she'll get rain out. You never know. Um, all right, up to our educational presentation. Uh, Ms. Shorter. We not to Will you leave us? Yeah. yeah. Not so I, I wish. You can I you, wish. we like it when you kind of throw your hand up. Yeah, and I love it too, person. <laughs> <laughs> have a good night, everyone. Thank you. Bye. Um, so really briefly, I believe you already got the proposed language for the for the handbook. 
Um, the language just followed similarly what is uh, what already exists in terms of laying out uh, what the expectation is for middle school students and then what the consequences are for infraction. Um, where the existing language is uh, that was included, um, halfway down it uh, added uh, the words all students. So we would, right now it says middle school students off and away, high school students when they can use it. And then it kind of outlines all the consequences the same. Um, there's gonna be sort of a, a little bit of difference in consequences between high school and middle school based on the differences in, in how we're doing cell phones. So where it says all students, it will just, those things are still hold true. If in fact you were using your cell phone for some reason, um, it's important for students to know that they are responsible for the content of their cell phone at all times, whether it's in the pouch or not. Um, and that we're not that students shouldn't be using them for recording during the school day unless they have explicit permission, um, and so on and so forth. So, um, so this is the language for the handbook. We do have a plan or have been drafting um, some paperwork to when we roll out to send out to families about the specific procedures. The procedure for what you do every day doesn't really need to be in the handbook, as that would flex based on what we're doing or how it goes. Or, um, and representatives from yonder will come out and meet with us. They actually recommended some language for and and uh, for your handbook. They recommend language for like they recommend some consequences piece. They also uh, will come out and do a training with us when we're actually ready to roll it out. Um, so they're going to walk us through anything we need. Um, but here's Are the we at that language. We're not just carte blanche taking. Oh no, definitely not. If we just use it as a guide. No, no, that's for, I mean, these are also the ones that you recommend that you buy 18 million pouches. Exactly, exactly. Pouches. And we did elect not to go with uh, teacher pouches. Um, we will have, we will speak to teachers. We will speak to teachers about um, not having their phones out, but we're, we're not going to go down that. Did way. they recommend everybody in town buy a pouch? <laughs> it's like, but that was what we're going no. at. And the teacher ones they provide aren't actually locking, they're just pouches. To make it out that way. Well, yeah, or to provide, to provide a place to provide a place to put your phone so that it's off and away. And well, they have a drawer. They do to do that. Cool. So, does anybody have any questions about any of the proposed language or any of that? So, there's no change to the high school language. No. And the only thing that we're proposing is the middle school language change, correct? Right. right. Which is really, it used to just say that they have to be off and away. Now we just added off and away with the under pouches. Right. But we put explicit consequences as they relate to the, the pouches. Sure. I felt yep. like that was. No, important. I think that's really important. And the, and the, what we will hand out or distribute to families um, when we talk about the rollout, like what students do when they arrive to school, we'll include some pictures of what some of that examples of damage look like. So it'll show the pouch and it'll show where a rip or what a pen mark. Or where the pin is and all that. So when do we anticipate starting this? I would say definitely by the end of the quarter. Um, okay. So before the end of the year, or no, right before the end of the yeah, quarter. Yeah, I, I would say by November 1st, we'll be ready oh, to vote. Okay. I'm, I'm thinking that would be a good time when we switch from uh, first quarter to second yeah. quarter, quarter, because it's kind of a natural break in, in the action of things. And I, I believe we, we can be ready for that. But I'm not that. promising that, but that's no, no, no. the only I want to make sure you've got a, make sure that you've got enough. I mean, even if it's delayed a week, who cares? Yeah. I mean, make sure you've got enough time to let the parents know yep. so that they've got an opportunity to ask the questions because you know where that, that yep. that's where that's going to come from. Yeah. And if we do that well, then. We I will... think, yeah. And I think once this language is proposed and we get the uh, confirmation from Yonder about when we can have the, yeah. then um, we can send this out to you. That you can't take long for them to put those sensors in the walls, right? I don't think so at all. Yeah. Do the kids know that she's coming? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, I've already heard from the high schoolers, this is stupid. I said, listen, you may not need to deal with that. If you guys behave yourselves <laughs> and you do the right thing, then you don't get yonder pups. Are you, are you going to have a meeting with the high schooler to kind of give them the, the forewarning and say, hey, look, this is what we're looking at, and we're going to implement. And if you guys do a good job, then it stops here. Yeah. 
we can. I think we, I just, I think we need to roll this out with middle yeah. school and see how it goes. Although some of the some of the issues that we have, some of the problematic issues that would be mitigated by having yonder, I don't necessarily think that giving them a warning are necessarily going to change those things just based on our experience. It might oh, the warning with the younger kids. Yeah. So we'll 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 collect our data on multiple things and we'll but yeah, they're they're they won't like it. They, they're already <laughs> kind of talking about that kind of nervousness about not wanting um, the detox. It is. It is. It is. A lot of yeah. 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 They are yeah. to their problems. Absolutely. Interesting. Very good. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> when I see the chocolate chop, good luck. <laughs> All right. I'll do the communication. <laughs> Thank you. Mrs. Carrier. Right. Got some colorful slides for us yet? Yeah, of course. <laughs> Um, but let's start with the strategic plan first. Um, so you've had that already to look at, and it follows the district strategic plan. It's very similar to last year's. We are in multi-year initiatives. So most of the time you're seeing a slight change in language just to reflect the next step of that initiative. You know, we've probably seen last year a lot of small group work would be literacy. Now we're working in more whole group. So all you're seeing is moving forward. The ADL work that we did last year was primarily me. Um, my learning as an administrator, and now we're rolling down where the staff are involved in the life. So I don't know if you have any specific questions about strategic planning. Doesn't sound like it. Okay. Well, that wasn't the colorful slide. <laughs> <laughs> That's the fun part, right? So. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. No, that's right. It froze. <laughs> you enable content. Yeah, it's no, it's the screen froze. I can't even do anything at the second. I do apologize. It's giving me one let it catch up, I guess. Oh, yes. I don't think, um... All right, so first up, we have um, our ELA achievement. Um, as I put in the summary, unfortunately, our ELA achievement is still lagging. Um, we're not seeing that. We're not totally surprised by that because we know that our math took multiple years after our initiative really to catch up. So after a couple of years of math initiative, then we saw the growth in the MCAP. So we know that this is going to be one of the, the last pieces to come. Um, however, we do see good SGP still. So we know that a 50 is the midpoint for SGP. So that bottom row you can see right now, 45, 49, 44. So while our, our overall achievement numbers aren't quite where we would want them, um, we still are having the student growth that we'd want to see. What's SGP again? Yeah. Student growth percentile. So I always explain to people, if you take um, 100 kids who all got the same score in third grade, and as fourth graders, you line up those 100 kids. Um, the and Again, it's where they have the same score the year before, where they would line up. So our kids line up around the 50th percentile in comparison to kids who have the similar score to them last year. Okay. Um, so math achievement. Um, math achievement, we are seeing our not meeting at half of the state rate. So that's really huge. So our kids not meeting is far less than what the state and we're really, you know, our meeting is at the state or better. We have some fluctuations within that, but for the most part, we are seeing ourselves outscore the state um, finally. So that's really good to know. Science, we've outscored the state for many years and continue to do so. So that is a pride of, of our teachers for sure. Um, but that always comes out looking really good. Um, cohort tracking. So this is the one that I always do because I want to see, you know, what is happening with kids over the years. So in ELA, unfortunately, we are, are seeing not really a trend, just variable. So it seems that some years the group is up, some years the group is down. We're not making that. What we want to see is that slow steady gain each year. So, uh, you know, slowly moving up a few percent 
out of warning and into partial and up into meeting and eventually exceeding. So that by the time they get to the high school, we see that as you know, just a, a trend. We see this up and down still. You know, so for example, when we look at the sixth graders who were up here, um, you know, one year 44% were in meeting, the next year 32, the next year 47. So it seems to be um, very, no rhyme or reason yet that we've been able to figure out very variable in our ELA. Math, however, we seem to be trending upward. Um, you know, our not meeting seems to be a year after year reduction. So we're slowly chipping away at that students who are in the red and moving them up. Um, a concern for us is that we still don't seem to be getting that exceeding number. So we seem to be doing a really nice job getting kids out of red, getting kids into that yellow, from yellow into green. We haven't cracked the code of the exceeding. All right, this is pre and post pandemic. So the, um, the state uses this to talk about recovery. So you can see that first column, how many were exceeding or what percent were exceeding and meeting pre pandemic. And then you can see us moving through the pandemic with the end being um, pre versus post pandemic the current year. Um, we do seem to be outpacing the state, um, especially in math. In math, we're actually exceeding our own pre pandemic levels. So we're really seeing that growth. Even in ELA, where we do see um, overall, we're, we're lagging in overall achievement, we are outpacing the state on getting back to where we were pre. Um, mm -hmm. Just jump in for a second. So when I said on the webinar with the state, this is really where they said, this is where you want to focus with your school committees and with your communities, because years ago, we were talking about the acceleration roadmap, and we put in all the, um, uh, with the ESSER funds, we put in the people to do the just-in-time teaching. This is what they were talking about because 2019 was the last time they gave the full MCAS pre-pandemic. And so that is what the state wants you to at least get back to. And they're using 2019 as the benchmark where they want you to be. Yeah. So, so that's why they have the slide. Yeah, up. So in looking at this, you can yeah. see, you know, if you look in third graders, for example, we were at 51% meeting exceeding the state was at 56. We are still below that um, by 10 points, but the state is below their original by 12 points. So we are slowly getting back on track and getting back on track better than the state is. Do you want to hit math? Yes, well, could you go back to that for a minute though? Because I want you to focus on yeah. sixth grade is zero. zero. The state's still so negative 11. Fifth grade is negative eight. We're at negative two. Is there is there anything to so the fifth graders, if we look at them where they're mm -hmm. where they're minus two, mm -hmm. they would have been in what they would have been in second grade, the pandemic first, hit? First, because my sixth grade wrong. Okay. So is there and because I, I can't help but notice if you look at the third graders are minus 10, fourth graders are minus seven, fifth graders mm -hmm. are minus two, sixth graders are zero. Mm -hmm. Is it yeah, I mean, for them, for the third graders that were in pre-K, not having pre-K, is there oh, a yeah. correlation yes. to Across them the not state, having the basics yes. that the would third. cause them? So then is it too far off to, to kind of suggest that this science of reading that we're doing is going to hopefully kind of present this in a different way, catch them up, and kind of put them on track to be yes. ahead of the game, right? Because that's yes. what we're kind of that's seeing. Exactly. Right? Yes. Are we seeing preliminary numbers? We that... are. And so we are going to see iReady benchmark data yeah. that's showing student growth in a, in a really solid way. We just know that it takes time for that to translate to eventual. Yeah, no, it, we know it's yeah. Not, I know it's not going to be yeah. overnight. Oh, and I mean, look, it's, we, I don't know whether our goal is, hey, let's beat the state. I mean, it, it, it's. Always. No, if we can destroy the state numbers, yeah, that would be, be even better. Yes, yes, yes um, well, certainly. Yeah. Okay. So in math, if you flip to the next yeah. one, in math, destroy the state yeah. is what we're we are actually seeing. So we are up three in third grade pre-pandemic. Yeah. We're up 26 in fourth grade, 14 in fifth grade, and we're down four, but the state's down eleven in sixth grade. So you can see our <laughs> our comeback in in math has been pretty big. Is there any so it actually flipped almost? Well, no, is there any thoughts on why the sixth graders didn't seem to Yes. Yes. Grab. Yes. So we, we've identified. We, and... Yeah, I think I mean, I, actually we talked about this cohort 
um, last year, this was a cohort that we yeah. kept 25. an extra teacher. So okay. if you remember, no, 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 we had right. six teachers last year in sixth grade, and there yeah. was a specific reason we did that, even though our numbers, and we came back with the budget time the year before when they were yeah. in fifth grade and said, okay, numbers look like we should be reducing down to five. We're all, we're going to stay with six. Right. And we talked at length about that. And this, this group is, is, a, is a needy group who uh, they... They went home from third grade in the pandemic. Exactly. Yep. And if, if you yeah. look, can I just get up and show? Yeah. This is how you can track them. 36. The previous year they were at 25. So yep. it's actually yeah. this cohort. If you look at diagonal, then that's where they are. In one year. Okay, on yeah. So they're doing better as a group. But, and they were in fifth grade, 222. They were at 25. Yeah, those, oh. And in sixth grade, back, 36. So you can oh, see okay. them. Oh. Yeah. Oh, I got it. And then they were at 29. And then they so were So in third grade, this group was not doing bad. Yeah, correct. And then, and then they ran into a struggle. Yes. Yeah. Which COVID right. said, no, no, yeah. absolutely. So 40, 50, 70. <laughs> wow. All right. So now we have some benchmark data. So here we have iReady. On the top is how they did in 22, below it is 23. So you can see we're starting this year better than we we started last year. So our kids in a better position um, when it comes to them on the kids in green. And below that you can see is the dibbles going back for the last um, three years. So you can see how slowly from 22 to 23 to 24, we're moving it. And, and the exciting thing is by doing it year by year, this means it's sticking. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, this isn't just like at the end of the year. This is coming through the summer to the next year. Do they start the following year in a better place? And little by little, they are starting the each year in a better place. All right. So this is the same thing with a cohort. So, for example, the kids who are currently in grade three, we can see that they're starting this year about the same, but look, we had some blue, yeah. which has always, again, been one of our struggling issues. So that was pretty exciting. Um, grade four starting in a better place than they were starting last year. Um, grade five not starting in as solid of a place. Um, these kids have had some regression. We have identified what that is. And um, we talked a little bit about this actually at the end of the year. The students in grade four hit a fluency area. And we, as a district, were just starting our fluency piece of the initiative in January. And so it timed out that they, what they needed, we were almost really not ready as a district in our learning to give them. So we're catching up with them right now. Um, and grade six starting in a more solid place. Here's math. Um, so again, math definitely starting in a better place than we finished or that we started last year with uh, more more students ready with, you know, looking like almost 20 kids more on grade level at the start of this year than the previous year. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Um, and again, this is the top would be last year and here's where they are this year so that you can see each grade, um, and obviously each grade starting off this year stronger and better, ready for grade level math. So our little by little, these, these steps we're taking are sticking. How many how many new kids to each grade are we getting, did we get this year? Um, depends on the grade, but probably between six, okay. kind of five or six in most grades. So basically, Usually one, two, I was going to guess five or ten. Okay. Now, one to a group. I was just wondering you whether that whether there was enough there where it's like okay, well we're we're moving our we're moving our kids in the right mm -hmm. direction, but every year we're bringing in kids that we're getting we back are, from other districts sure. that could potentially kind of water down that. I mean, that's but, inevitable in any. No, no yeah. I'm just wondering yeah. how big of it. I, I don't I don't think there's a way that they can carve that out, but I'm just wondering whether that's on an individual level we are because we're having our data meetings with each teacher. So we're sitting, looking at each group of kids and starting to look at where they need to move. So we're able to see, okay, is this a known name or is this a kid who does, we don't know because this is brand new to us. Um, we did assign reading interventions. We made our list over the summer based on their scores in the spring. So we do now have a couple of kids that we're looking at going, all right, we need to add some names in because we weren't planning on them. But so far we, we seem to be pretty good. 
All right, big summary. And I, I think I went through all of these and, um, and said, you know, all of this out loud to you, except the very last one, which there's no chart for, but it is the most important one, our MCAS accountability percentile. Um, so when in 2019, when you see that those pre-pandemic numbers, um, our accountability percentile at the time, um, Desi would use a two-year accountability uh, formula that took part of your year before plus part of the current year and gave you this number. So that year, our overall was in the 30s, the low 30s, but our actual 2019 number was 17th percentile. Just so you know, the state comes in at 10. All right, so Powder Mill was in, in a pretty scary spot in 2019. Uh, last year, we were at 40. And so it was really exciting, big jump. This year, we moved up. Um, they went back to the two-year formula. So our score could even be higher because we've got the 40 from before. Um, so our our total this year was 50. So we are at dead at the 50th percentile. Now, last year, I showed you guys this. So four years, you move 33%. So last year, if you look at all the sports schools around us, we're this oh, yeah. yellow one. Yeah. Okay, that was us. So these are the schools around us, like, you know, you see Phelps in Avalon, you see uh, Northampton, a school in Amherst, um, you know, some schools in La Meadow, obviously, West Hampton, East Hampton. So there's a variety of schools, and there's there we are. So in comparison, this is where we are now with the same list, the same places, the same communities. So that kind of shows you growth. <laughs> so we are thrilled, thrilled to, to be up there. I mean, the schools that are outperforming us now are not, obviously in our community, in our area, are not that many. Um, and we're, we're very excited. So we're hoping to have the same kind of growth. We're going to be on a whole new page in a couple of years. Well, that's it. Just so that's the top. top. So how do, they, how do they group those? This is, I, I chose our the communities in our area. So I group it first by oh, doing okay. elementary. So I get rid of all the high schools. And then I move to them. Like they have like a Western section. Okay. Um, but I just do that so we can see, you know, like, okay, so maybe we're losing to Wellesley. Like who is it, you know? Um, but it's nice to know around us what, you know, how many elementary schools are we really talking about in our area that are outscoring us? And right now, you know, it's not many. It's probably what, 15? These are the type 15? of things I wish, I no. wish there could be. From an incentivizing kind of perspective, like yeah. when they start talking about, okay, how do we reward right. teachers and programs? Stuff like that is is kind of the result. Or it's like, look, if you your get yourself retention to, rates in this district are pretty positive, right. and your administrative retention is even better. And I think those things that speaks to mm -hmm. well, but the results are coming in. I mean, yeah. which is good. Yeah, and you know, and we're climbing, and I'm really hoping we start to see a nice slow progression now from the ELA. But when they start doing these percentiles, they're looking at all sorts of scores um, and they assign you points. And so we've got a lot of points for achievement in math. We've got a lot for our lowest performers improving, um, but we don't get any in ELA. So it would be nice to start like, okay, if we can get a couple points on the ELA side, we really could see some, some great numbers. There, there, I know you guys used to, when we were doing some sort, it was a reading challenge years ago. If we read X amount of books, everybody gets this. Be interesting if we could come up with this kind of thing. but something cool. Like, hey, we can bring up our things another X amount of points, or that gives us a. Is that we can have a. Could we get something from the teacher? Yeah, it just came. good. Well, please yeah. let the teachers know that we can see their improvement and all the hard work that they're doing. So that's oh, awesome. Thank oh, you so much. Very excited. No, I good. did happy to answer. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I'm still in right. Please. I came running down. I was like, <laughs> and I had just looked at it and already done the happy day for Jenny minutes before she came in. So, all right. Uh, policies. We have nothing tonight. We have just, uh, we are reorganizing our policy meeting time. Those of you that are on the committee, um, thank you. Look at that. And just to let everybody know, we had a little adjustment. Ryan has graciously um, asked to join the policy committee, which we were able to do. Um, she's giving up health advisory. 
but we still have a couple of people on there. Desiree. Desiree, I forgot to ask you, did you have any questions for um, Aaron? No, no. Okay, good. Great. Like I'm doing an amazing job. So. Yeah, you would have been very happy with the color slides that we got to see. I am just bummed that I didn't get the color. All right, are we good? Okay, Superintendent Willard, action items. Uh, move to approve consent agenda items as listed above recommended. So moved. Anybody have any questions on um, consent? We don't have any questions. All right, uh, I'm going to do a roll call vote. Uh, Ted. Yes. Uh, Pam. Yes. Erica. Yes. Russ. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Desiree. Yes. Yeah. And Rob's a yes. Motion passes 700. Move to approve SRS 2324 handbook changes, cell phones, and electronic listening devices. Recommended. So moved. Second. Okay, any questions on this side? All right. Uh, take a roll call vote for approval. Ted. Yes. Pam. Yes. Erica. Yes. Russ. Yes. Ryan. Yes. Desiree. Yeah. Rob Z, yes. Motion passes 700. Move to approve superintendent goal for the 23 24 school year recommended. So, mm. anybody have any questions? I do want to make a comment to uh, I am always impressed with the time and effort that you put into doing this. Um, it's not easy to do that. I know all of us probably at different times during our jobs have been asked to come up with goals and you have to do them every year and adjust some and, and come up with new ones. So that, that effort is not unnoticed. All right, we'll do a roll call vote to approve the item. Ted? Yes. Pam? Yes. Erica? Yes. Russ? Yes. Ryan? Yes. Desiree? Yes. Yeah. Rob's a yes. Motion passes 700. All right, Superintendent Willard. So if, with our um, regional agreement, we have to come up with a budget round table date. And um, in November, believe it or not, it's going to be quickly approaching. And I'd like to either propose the uh, Tuesday after November 24th or November 26th, I think is the Thursday. 20, so in that week, um, yeah. are you looking for the week Thank, yeah. of Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving or the week after? after. Yeah, that'd be the week after Thanksgiving, yeah. Tuesday is the 28th, yeah. and the Thursday is the 30th. Those two days. Sounds good. Anybody have any issues with either one of those days? Okay. We get first right of refusals before we send them out. Okay. All right, that sounds good. Yeah. I um, have worked with our central office admin team. Um, and I was hoping in alignment with that to meet with the special ed. Um, I know you're going to go through it later, the special ed um, liaison, Pam, Erica, and Ryan. I'd like to have a meeting with the three of you before that, because I think a big part of the budget roundtable is I really want to um, communicate. I can't communicate names, but I really want people to understand the situation we're in with special education. Um, and and just share it in a, where we're not just talking about numbers, but so people can understand it. So I would like to start with you as a subcommittee. Um, so if we can find a time, I'll have um, Aaron send out an email and we'll find a time that we can meet. It could be in Zoom on in the evening if we needed to, yeah. um, where if we can't do during the day, okay? But just so we can all talk and I just want to bring you in the loop. Like the week before Thanksgiving? No, no, like before in October. Then. In October. Yeah. So I just want to, we started talking about it and it, it is going to be more of a financial issue next year than. <laughs> that already looks mm -hmm. interesting already. Yeah. Yeah. So I just want to <laughs> get everybody on board right early. <laughs> um, so I, so if we can just meet on that because um, Robin's done a really nice job of breaking it up and um, giving us some forecasting going in the future of oh, pre-K and the ones in grade two is coming our way. So, but the highlight of my night is our hashtag Be Gold initiative. So, this year, um, if you just go to the next slide, uh, I always, at every uh, presentation that I do at the beginning of the year, um, I mentioned it in my um, interview for this job. Um, I am a firm believer, I live my life, uh, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Um, I truly 
believe in that as teachers, um, it's great if you're a really smart teacher, um, but you can't, ex if the other needs are not being met, our kids cannot reach their self-actualization. Um, so the physiological needs are basically what we expect when our kids go home. It's their food, it's their water, it's their sleep. We all know our kids who don't have that. And we always make sure that, you know, we know that those are our most at-risk students and, you know, we pay special attention to them. Um, safety. Safety, I kind of think of safety. Um, that was my back to school speech during COVID. Like everything was safety, safety, safety. Um, but then for the past two years, we've really been working on our belonging initiative, the hashtag brands belong, about just making it so that you feel that you have a place here, that you feel like you are welcome here, that parents are welcome, that children are welcome, that community members are welcome, that our schools are a welcoming place for everybody. And this year, I'm really working on building that self-esteem. So it's really taking that sense of belonging to the school and really starting to recognize kids, not just feeling like they belong here, but actually recognizing them. And so we had a little competition on some initiative names and it came out with the hashtag Be Gold. And I uh, sent it out. And the reason that we came up with Be Gold and I really wanted to do some background information on it and Joe kind of gave us a little bit, but I guess Jim Vinson, um, came up with the uh, colors. I guess Southwick's colors used to be green and white. And he's a Green Bay Packers fan. And um, he switched it to green and gold like years and years and years ago. So our colors are not green and yellow. Our colors are green and gold. And gold is a precious metal. And when we think about precious metals, they have the qualities of excellence, of strength, of being unique. And that's what our kids are. And that's what we want our kids to feel. And that's what's going to increase their self-esteem is that they celebrate their uniqueness. They celebrate their excellence, that we build their strength. And that when they leave here, they shine just as brightly as our gold. So that's our initiative this year is to really make our kids feel like, wow, I not only do I belong here, but I'm kind of awesome. And everybody sees how awesome I am. And um, we, we start noticing that about kids. And you're going to see that uh, Woodland and Potter Mill do that phone call home now. So kids are calling home and saying, look how awesome I am. And we're, we're showcasing it. What a great day, everybody. Look at me. I get to call my parents and tell them just how awesome I was today. But then they and put on social media as well. That's right. <laughs> and that, but that's part of it. And it's like, we, we always get the negative phone calls, but we need to start really celebrating and having these kids have these really great moments at school and feeling really awesome. So you're going to see um, a lot of hashtag be gold, a lot of things where kids, um, I know at Potter Mill, they're doing gold coins. I know they're doing something at the regional with a gold suit. I'm not quite sure what it is, but I'm, it's being slowly rolled out that if you have a good day or something, you're going to be putting on a gold. Okay, I can't say anything. <laughs> but they are doing something up there with the be gold initiative. So um, more to come, but it's really about creating a real strong sense of self-esteem for our kids. Um, so it's by the time my journey ends here in Southwick, we will be at self-actualization so that all our kids will be living um, to their highest potential. So that when they do come to school, yeah. what they're really focusing on is just being, focusing on that. Like, I'm great. What, yeah, what are you going to give me today? I got this. I can handle this. Whatever you throw my way. If it's strong, if it's challenging for me, I got this. That's my productive struggle. I learned through difficulty. I learned through failing. That's great. I got this. And uh, that's what I want for our kids is to know things aren't easy, but I got it. I can do this. And to believe in themselves, no matter what life brings them, just to believe in themselves. That's cool. So that's our Be Gold initiative. <laughs> so you'll see that. that. That infographic is really great. Yeah, I've never seen that before. Because every time you mention it, it's all like, what is this? Thing? Oh, map look hierarchy and need? Oh my gosh, it's like my theme. Right. My life theme. That's what Jen would do. It's definitely a child psych class, at least. Yeah. But oh, I love math though. You yeah, just need to like yeah. pair your um your initiatives with that, right? Mm -hmm. Like a next to the safety one, like put your arrow like mm -hmm. this was COVID. This was mm -hmm. hashtag rest long. And then now this one, this is hashtag be gold. Be gold. Yeah. You know, like this is your like this is on self-actualization. Right? This is me. This is your legacy. <laughs> it's like your yeah. legacy right here. Right. Yeah. Yeah, and you were at my interview. Yeah, the two of you. Yeah, they, well, and, and then this, this is part of your, yeah. you know, your speech. You're welcome your back to school speech. speech every year. Yep. Every single year. And every single back to school speech, I always mention that those hierarchy. 
because you can't get to here unless you've met these other needs, right? Like I say, a kid doesn't care what you know unless they know that you care. But this frames it, this gives yeah. it purpose yeah. and it yeah. gives it a nice visual. Mm -hmm. I think that is a good idea just to put the different hashtags that go along mm -hmm. with every level. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, you guys, I see a moment yeah. of green and gold. So, if anybody wouldn't mind saying God bless you, God bless you. Can <laughs> you help your self esteem? Oh, yeah. like... <laughs> I'm Matt already at self actual esteem. is good. Erica's a little thought. <laughs> so, I just wanted to share it. I'm really excited about oh, it. Hang on, Desiree, you want to say something? Yes, Desiree. <laughs> I just want to say, Jen, I love absolutely everything about this. I think when I when I read through it, I just I love it, and I am going to admit that I am old enough to remember the color change of the top of high school. When they became green, white, and gold. So I'm all over this. Kudos to you. I think it's amazing, and I just can't wait to see where this goes. We need to document this somewhere so that it lives in some historical place someplace. Well, I just did. I have to say that. Yeah. Oh, God. Oh, here we go. Heard from older alumni, other than me, it ruined the song. The Dolphin song used to be green and white. St. Mary's had the gold. Mm -hmm. I think it's rival. So <laughs> I, I, I know when Jim changed this, I mean, the basketball were champions. And stuff like that, but there is some pushback <laughs> from some older alumni. All right, well, be white isn't as good as be gold. I can assure you of that. Maybe when we could bring the old song and put it somewhere. Be, yeah. Yeah. Mm -mm. be white is be bad. <laughs> be gold. Be gold. All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. I didn't mean it like that. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Turmel, what do you got for us? Uh, we have phase two of the vestibule project here at Powder Mill, um, starting and completing on Friday with the uh, the glass where Ms. Parker is stationed, and that is going to be uh, replaced where it's sturdier and more secure and safe for everyone coming in the building. Um, meeting with Ricotta and the vape sensors tomorrow to get that up and going. Everything is in and installed now by the October 1st. Now we just need to, to get it connected. So we hope in the next week or two of that we are ready to go with that. Um, reached out to um, Jay of the uh, Amato, John Amato right, yeah. of the Athletics, we're waiting for him to get back to us about yeah. the next meeting there. And both how about our How'd your meeting go with, our, with your IT people? So the uh, RFQ request for um, quotes is going out on Friday for the uh, technology project. Sure. So that needs to be posted for two weeks. At that time, at the end of the two weeks, we will um, assess the the uh, bids, the quotes, and go with, uh, uh, by going with the uh, RFQ, it allows us to choose uh, it's it's more than just getting a quote. It's getting uh, the process of what we really need to do, um, formulating a plan. Well, so is that to replace the nodes, or that's the whole everything. thing? Okay. That allows oh, us to okay. everything. So now we can start with the two hundred thousand dollars that yep. we already have for it, and then the capital project as well. So by doing this as one complete project, we can jump right into the cost. Okay. Everybody, any questions? Is there any questions? Uh, no, I'm good. Okay, awesome. Okay, thank you very much. Um, negotiations, not that right now, right? Soon, we can email out. Okay, because we've got everything so right. Very good. Uh, finance, we had one meeting, right? We had one meeting around grants. Yep. We our next meeting is going to be with Mr. Lola Bridge and we'll looking at food fun. service. Fantastic. Very good. And when are we going to do that? That's this month, right? Did we send that out yet? We did. We pick a date. Okay, that's fine. Um, okay, let's see. LP back. The meeting was actually canceled because there was no call. Oh, well, I got a note. I've got a meeting coming up. Um, I just said yes to it on the tenth. That they want to give us an update on transportation. 
for the corporation. So yeah. I don't know. You probably yeah. are there. They're going to tell us. Uh, <laughs> policy, we've got some revamp. We're moving our first meeting to November the 14th, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Buildings and grounds. We haven't had a meeting yet. We probably need to get one. Aren't we scheduling something? That's all we start about. Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Um, ILT. Due today. Um, so first, they guess I left mine at home. Uh, we first talked about uh, the camp they run over the summer, which was another huge hit. Uh, they had 120 campers, and that was the cap. They had a wait list. Um, we talked a lot about, they had, they had nine staff members, plus a nurse was there. Uh, they had a bunch of high school students helping, one of them, a couple of them. Uh, great reviews again, as always, we've had a wonderful time. I think their main concerns was lunch was too long because they couldn't spend as much time doing their projects. And that so the little ones couldn't per participate in a lot of recess activities due to safety reasons. So it's their only concerns. Um, this coming summer, they'll offer it again. Um, but after that point, we need new funding sources. Um, so we talked extensively about that. Um, the, the people we use currently, um, we buy everything. So like the materials, we staff our own people and pay them through the Southwick and then have more autonomy on it. So like they suggest with our program to have five teachers. We use eight. That way, our younger kids can have a smaller class size or size, whatever you want to call it. Um, that's to the tune of what forty thousand dollars we would need to find um, versus our two other models. Um, one of them being that they come in and they basically they our staff would then be hired by them and they would get paid for them. Um, they kind of have all control um, versus the hybrid with another option. Is this we just need free to right think about yeah, it. Is free so currently, yes. right? So through it's money now. It's been funded right. by so, ESSER money right. for the past three or four years. Yeah. Um, this upcoming summer will be the last summer that we can use that grant That's money right. to fund it. And between the what we pay for the entire program plus what we pay our staff members, we spend about forty one, forty two thousand dollars. So just over forty thousand. Or, or, or that's what it that's what it would you know like that's what the grant is covering right now the what we have to have do is think about where we want to move from here it, are we going to still offer it if we're still going to offer it to what cost um and who pays for it so you know like we can we can partially fund it and have parents partially fund it um, and we can have different levels of involvement with this program that would put us at different price points. So these are conversations that need to take place, um, you know, as we consider if we want to continue to offer this. And if so, you know, what did we did we offer? Life. Did this come up of because of COVID? Mm -hmm. Yes, yes, yes. So and before, so before it was a zero line item. Right. right. Now it's forty thousand dollars a year. Well, we well, don't spend it. No, no, no. But, but that's yes. what it costs. It's what, it's what we've it costs got. We've got a grant to pay for it. Right. And it doesn't have to cost that much. We've been yeah, like other all options it. can be. No, no, no. Like right. this kind of Get it. I it just has said. been phenomenally successful. Um, part of why it's been so successful is it has been a free opportunity for families to take advantage of. Um, but it has been a great program. Um, it is. They, having had done it for so many years, it's now very well run. Um, they've kind of worked out the kinks. It's also a really awesome opportunity for our high school students. Um, but it is definitely something that Beth and Jenny um, need to talk about with regard to funding, put forward some possible options to, to us as we move into budget season. Where's Camp Huddle? Here. So what's the grade? K through K to six. Yeah, K to six. Yeah. So, yeah. Finish K. so this is fully funded for this upcoming summer. Yes, correct. So here's the question that I would throw out. No, no, I understand, but I guess here's the question I would throw out. 
we've got an option of either A, just keep it running the way we ran it because we've got the funds and we do it and bam, we do it in the summer. Do we try to try a different route since it's fully funded at a lower amount? Because I'm assuming we get, the, let's say, just what if, let's say we did it and we structured a program that was only 20,000, not 40, but 20. We take those $20,000, I'm sure there's somewhere else that we can spend $20,000 mm -hmm. on ESER funds this year. So everything's still fully funded. That way we get a chance to see how a reduced model works and there's no risk. Because it doesn't cost us anything. It's already paid for. Therefore, the next year, when it is going to cost us something, we can figure out whether it's worth 20000 bucks, And if it is, we figure out a way to find it in the budget. If it's not worth 20000 it's worth 10000 bucks. then maybe we split it with families. But if we don't try something different the upcoming summer, when it, there's no risk, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be we're gonna be testing something out when it's when it's not funded at all, and then we might not know if there's a good alternative. We're just throwing that out there. We can do it either way; it doesn't hurt us. But it might be worth looking at making an adjustment for this upcoming summer. Can we, can we see what this camp looks like? Too. Like, does that make sense? Any way to that, put, like, oh, that like, has yeah, just like yeah, huge like power. Yeah, yeah. 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 So you you know, know, just before, to understand what it is. is oh, that's what they usually like. I won't call it curriculum, but for lack of a better word, like modules. Module. Mm -hmm. So like, yeah, mimic bots was a huge one this year, but yeah. they usually, it's like a STEM camp. Yeah. Essentially what? It's basically it's, building stuff. Like, with, like, and they have, um, yeah. like yeah. they We're do over at the library sometimes. Like form. the library will do these yeah, programs no where you yeah. have like, and so like the program and cookies or something so, like that. So the program provides the modules like what you know, what you are to build, yeah. um, how you go about doing it, as well as the materials for it. Um, so basically, the what we're paying for is the curriculum and the staff. Could um, we have National Honor Society kids do yeah. the staffing? Yeah. They do part of it. So yeah. we had um, we had nine adults and 18 kids so i mean like we're already you know really relying on on our student volunteers a lot um, are there other alternatives out there like uh kids in college that are going to be teachers that we could bring in and pay at a lower rate or something like that is that i'm just thinking that if we're going to play around with it next summer is the time to do it because it doesn't cost us a dime so, I mean, I think that that these are definitely conversations that we need to have with Beth and Jenny, yeah. for sure. Because so the easy um, answer is, look, it's 40,000 bucks. There's no way we can afford it. We cut it. Like, I don't know if that's, I, I don't know. I don't want to go there. Well, I like, think if we, the way for us to do it. I would be disappointed. One of the, um, one of the suggestions that was made at the meeting today was, you know, pull, pull your families that have been involved in this for the last several years and figure out what their price point would be. That they that they can reasonably um, yeah. think this program is. I working. mean, just it, if there's 120 kids at 40,000, three hundred thirty-three dollars a kid. Now, if we can come up with a program that does an effective job at twenty thousand, half of that you're looking at 150, 160, 157 dollars would cover the whole thing if we put some money into it. If we if they pay a hundred, is it worth a hundred dollars? I so don't I know. think that that's you know that second proposal that Beth prevents. Yeah, there was one of them that simple one. Net. Yeah, proposal. Yeah, exactly. So that that option exists. Yeah. No, I know, but I mean, you obviously don't want to do that next year because we don't need them to pay, but we need to come up with a structure no, that I see comes what you're up with that use comes that, up functional. Use model number two. And try model number two next year, mm -hmm. and yeah. and take some of those funds and because put if it's over a complete, to the problem. Let's right. say you do it and you're like, this doesn't work at all. Well, fine, it doesn't cost us a dime to do that. We restructure it for the following year. And we do it. I don't know. Yeah. No, no, no. no, no. We won't be able to push it over. Right. But we've got more than enough stuff that we can use $20,000 for with each of us. Is that, what do you think, Ross? You've been dealing with budgets and stuff like this for a long time. You know where the talent's going to be coming from this year. So if you can come up with things like we talked in the, uh, the grants, yeah, you know, and explain those. Like that's what I think. Is there a grant? Is can Jenny? Is there a grant out there that we can apply for so that, that we get us again, twenty thousand? Again, that was also 
fundraising was also brought up if we could yeah. fundraise yeah. more to help them. Yeah. Just the people chipping in, you know, I had to pay two thousand dollars for Julie to go full day ten Yeah. Right. Okay. I mean, I, I, I think that we're looking right. at if we Please. want to continue this, I think we're looking at right. some parental contributions. Right. Yeah. Um, the the issue is you know how much and right. and, and right. which platform do we want to go with if we want to continue offering this? And you know, again, I think that that is a if you want Beth to present to the whole group what she presented um, at ILT today. Um, and well, I think I think it's going to end up, I think it would need to come to us at some point. Absolutely. I would suggest it comes sooner than later. Because if you sit and wait till next year when the money's gone and then try to figure it out, I think it's going to be too late. You've got to start now. Did they present a breakdown of the 40000 Yeah. Yeah. They did. Uh, 21st staff. It's about half and half. Yeah, half staff versus your Yeah, it's about half and half. 21. Yeah. So, and, you know, we don't have to go as many staff. She did. So, we've done this how many years? the amounts for the other two three years. Okay, so I'm going to ask here's, so we have the materials from the last three years? No, they're consumables. But we pay for them. Yeah. Right, but right. we pay for consumables. They're consumables. They fill with them, and then they get to we, take it home. Gonna, if we've got three years worth of stuff, then we can just do it every three years. Pay anything at all. Like an art class, and then they take said art project home. Think no, of it. But I mean, it, it's but the if we're paying for the curriculum, and the curriculum was A B C D E F, oh, yeah. and, the and right. now we've but got that for this year. Change it every year. Change it every year. That's my point. So therefore, you can recycle these things every three years, and the kids don't get the same things. And it potentially doesn't cost us a dime. No, they come with all the materials that you need on the project. <laughs> right. Like, say you're going to build a wow. roller coaster. Roller coaster. Oh, that's funny because I was thinking the same thing. <laughs> and then just remember <laughs> the roller coaster. Yeah, okay, it so comes with, with all the there. materials yeah. to right. build. So that's what you're coaster. you're buying is you're buying the, right. the materials. It's like the they science robots. Right. It's going to need to come to us anyway because it's on a it's going to be a budget line item and yeah, exactly. have better ideas or information that we can. Like mm -hmm. and, and you know, like again, Beth has been living and breathing this for you know four yeah. summer. So she's really the one that we, you know, yeah. that we want to ask our questions of. So good text. I, I would I would like to know just how many fallen kids <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, all in our district. Because they're invited doesn't mean they come. Right. No. Well, correct, but they're invited. So also they also and that note, the other two options would then be open to our surrounding area. So it wouldn't necessarily oh, just be South Bay Paul and Granville kids. True. The cheaper options do open it up to other districts. It is not them. So, it's them so we're the closest out. district that offers something like this. We know that. Because that would be a good Like if Angola has it, Westfield has it, guess what? It's not going to work. No, I don't. Yeah, I don't really know. You're not going to you're gonna have to go through them to come to us. So they're just going to do that. Yeah. But I mean, again, as it is, we're already turning kids away, partially right. because from our own, right, from our own district. We're turning yeah. kids away because we, we want only to have one hundred twenty slots. Slot. Cost more money to buy more. It comes to like so oh, about like one twenty, right. ninety, one twenty, one fifty. Right. So every time you buy so more, the what's the length of the day? Of it's a full oh, day. Oh, full day. It's, it's, it's like an eight so this is a, full day. I, just, I can see why you have to It's a whole day. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a whole day. Like yeah. So it's a real camp. Oh, yeah. 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 No, you made, it, you made a comment about you can go to a real camp. Well, like, you know, like a Camp Shepherd where they do a bunch of crap outside. Oh, yeah. kind of There's no dorm <laughs> rooms, bro. So you're trying to say what? I also said, like, like this one up here. Anyway. They you learned something at said distance. They just have two kids working in the same thing. They have double kids, right? <laughs> then they can share. Rob, you're Have you had right. a kindergarten yeah. for share with them? They got to learn somewhere. We're on that hierarchy sharing. Oh, Instead of math, um, those. Oh, what else? Oh, there's more. There's more. Okay, what else? Can we there? talk about uh, so, um, yes. So, Laura, our literacy K through six coach, presented on the district literacy plan. And this is basically like a, a planning document. 
different, you know, in terms of what the coaches are doing with administrators and with teachers to move us forward as in our work with health for literacy. Um, and a big part of that is, um, you know, the, the way that we communicate with parents. So an important thing um, to remind everybody of is the science of reading um, meeting that will take place for all families on October 12th that I believe we've all been invited to as well. Yeah, um, Zoom and in person. Yep, exactly. For those young kids, child care will be. Yep. I don't know why, but I think um, you can bring your kids. I'm assuming that you can bring your children. Yeah, NHS would. Right, yep, exactly. Um, and then um, we also are kind of rebooting the our format for ILT. Um, since COVID, it has been a remote meeting. Um, and for this year, we are returning to pre-COVID in-person meetings that will take place um, in the SRS library. Um, the meetings are pretty long. They're 3.30 to 5 p.m., um, but they are working collaboration meetings, and the intent is to put us back in person so that we're truly working, truly collaborating, and that each month has a, a focus um, in which we are um, collaborating within the framework of our district strategic plan and what we're doing at all three schools um, in support of our um, our goals in our district strategic plan. So the um, the next meeting um, is in November. We're focusing on um, how we are using our high quality instructional materials to support the science reading. And there will be presentations for all three three levels based on that, and or all three schools. And then the December meeting is about um, our decision making involving data. So not looking at data, not like a data presentation that um, you know that we just received, but like when we as educators are looking at data, what lens are we looking through? What kinds of questions are we trying to answer? Um, so, so we're we're just kind of giving rebooting and giving it a more collaborative purpose. Wellness. Nothing. Everybody's well. It's bed. So we need to the meeting in October. Yep. Uh, yep. Technology. Capital Committee, Mr. Fox, do you have anything yet? No meeting, yet. Okay. I have it under control. Okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you. I don't doubt that at all. Uh, master plan, we don't need anything right now. Athletics, we're probably due for a meeting. Yeah. So I know we're getting towards the end of the season mm -hmm. with the all the teams. And interestingly enough, power rankings are still, or they weren't out. Are they out yet? They're all today. Oh, okay. Because I was kind of like, when is going to put these? They were all Friday. I think they came out again this morning. Oh. Uh, yeah, yeah, they're out. Very good. Uh, legislative games going in November. Um, if anybody would like to go, please let us know, and we can take a look and uh, get that approved. Um, it's an interesting meeting for the week, or the end of the week to go do that. You'll, you'll enjoy it. Um, all right, public comment. Still nobody here, so we're going to move on. Uh, old business, I do, since you're here, I have a question for you. Did you receive any phone calls from any parents concerning the lunch issue that we talked about last meeting? Okay. So, once again, if there are any parents out there um, that are concerned about 7th and 8th grade lunch, um, please, please reach out to the principal at the high school. Uh, she will set up a meeting and they will come up with a solution for you. Um, the younger grades also. Yes. Part of Facebook, I don't comment. That's good. My kids are doing something. She would like longer recess and stuff. Okay. Very good. So we have the other side of the spectrum. <laughs> uh, new business. We've got revised school committee meeting schedule with everybody has. There's one thing that we need to just put on the watch list. I got notified today from the town that they might have to have a special town meeting on December the 5th. 
um, which is one of our nights for our meetings. I was asked to see if we would be open to moving our meeting or earlier or a different day. I said, you figure out what day you need. And if it is the fifth, you should probably be able to move it to a, either a Wednesday or another week or something. Um, is anybody opposed to, if we need to, move into like the Monday, December the 4th? Is that create a problem? For, yes, Pam? No, problem? just give me a minute. Oh, okay. <laughs> okay, I'm good. Desiree, your Monday evenings, would that be okay if we moved that December 5th meeting to the 4th if we needed to? Uh, yeah. Okay. It could be at 6 o'clock. Yeah. Well, that's I it. Drop off at, he stamped it for 530, so I could, I could make it for a 6 o'clock for sure. Super. So the other thing that um, Desiree and I talked about today is a question of if we have um, Desiree runs in a little issue with anything earlier than six o'clock. Um, if we have executive, um, we've normally had that at 530. I think we, I talked to this right earlier, we're okay, we leave it there. But on some days like today where we have no executive, is anybody opposed to just keeping the meeting times at six? And that way, if we have no executive, we still have it at six, we just come a little later. Um, I know that creates, that's what we used. It kind of, last year, I know we tried to kind of slide them up if, if we didn't have any. Um, if we're getting into negotiations, we're probably going to have executive meetings a bunch of times anyway. Um, so if nobody is opposed to that, then what I'd like to do is if we don't have executive, we still have our meetings at six. Um, but if we do have executive, uh, if Desert can't make it, then that's great. We can always conference her in um, on that, but that way we can have her here in person for most of the meetings. Uh, and we're going to get the school committee meeting? Yeah. yeah. Right, and we are gonna, yeah, we're gonna can't. We don't need to have a vote on that. We're gonna can't. We're gonna cancel the, the so meeting. So just on, we can cross it off of this. Yeah, though. November twenty first. We're gonna cancel that meeting uh, because we are going to have the uh, budget roundtable the following, following week. week. Yeah. And Jen and Aaron already looked at the schedule, and it looks extremely light on that night. So we'll do that. Anybody have anything else for new business? Just a question. Yes, sir. <clears throat> and you might already have the answer to this. People that would like to attend this meeting, is yeah. there signage of, of how to get into the building? And That's a good question. They, no, 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 for any meeting. For any, any meeting. I know it's, it gets a little confusing whether you go to the back door or the front door. That door gets unlocked. Unlocked? The hallway door? Yeah, that door gets unlocked. Um, yeah, yeah, you're right. Like, is there any way, like on on the night we have meetings, that we can have that that lock that door unlocked so they can come in right in yeah. maybe a signage? Yeah. yeah, you know, yeah, we can do that. It's not a problem. I'll, I'll put it on yeah. here. Good yeah. But if anybody does want to come visit us, well, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying, you, you know how open our meetings were. Absolutely, you yeah. know people. You know, it was yeah. easy to find us. Yeah. But this might be a little confusing. Yeah. I mean, if there's some people that would like to attend, uh, maybe they're thinking about the school committee or they you know, have kids and want to see what, how the meeting is run and they yeah. don't particularly care for doing yeah. so, Transparency. I think it's very important for anybody that's considering running to be able to attend meetings. Absolutely. All right. That's a good point. We'll take care of that right away. Yeah. Right. I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So. Okay. All right. We'll do a voice count to uh, end the meeting. Uh, Ted. Yeah. Pam. Yes. Erica. Yes. Russ. Again. Yeah. Ryan. Yes. Desiree. Yeah. And Rob's a yes. Motion passed seven zero zero. Good evening, everybody. Thank you for your time. Question, I guess, for Ted and. Yeah. Um,